Hi everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today I thought I'd do a another build video. I had a couple people ask about this after I did an unboxing of the AH-64 Apache helicopter for Team Yankee, Battlefront Miniatures game of hypothetical World War III combat. Um, so, here we have our box. Uh, I already opened the box. Within the box we had a set of instructions which are it's always helpful and obviously the plastic sprues that we're going to need this is one helicopter it comes in two sprues and uh, we're going to go ahead and build that now before we begin we'll just kind of go over the supplies that I typically use to put together my models please also keep in mind that I am by no means an expert model builder I am a rank amateur. Uh, I've been building models a while, um, but I don't think I'm anything special. But that said, I still think that um, what I can share might be helpful to some of you out there. All right, so here are the supplies I'm going to be using. I'm using Plastrux Plastic Weld um, Liquid Cement, which is uh, one of my favorites for plastic on plastic, general uh, you know, plastic solvent. So it melts the plastic and welds it together. We've got our X-Acto knife, our snippers to get parts off the sprue, and then a couple of different files, a round file, a flat, well this is a triangular file for um, you know cleaning up the pieces once we cut them off the frame. So we've got uh, basically everything we need here uh, that I can think of. I do want to apologize beforehand if you hear anything odd on the audio portion of this. Um, I live in Arizona. Normally it's blistering hot outside. Everything's closed up. Uh, today is the first day in October where it's actually nice outside, so I have the windows open. Um, so if you hear nature encroaching in on our video, you know what that's from, but I apologize from uh, in advance. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up with a plan of attack. So I kind of look over the um, instruction sheet this one doesn't have a step-by-step -step, uh, build, um, you know, order like a normal model kit or, you know, a Warhammer 40K um, model might. Um, so it really probably doesn't matter how we build this, but looking at the sheet gives us a, an idea of what we're going to do. So it looks like it's going to be pretty simple. Um, we're going to build the fuselage first, then we'll start adding stuff on as we, we go. So... Um, Rather than show you um, me clipping every single piece off here, we're going to go ahead and start with that uh, fuselage. Um, normally, we clip the pieces we need for each step, but again, since we don't have steps here, um, normally we use the clippers for this. I have used, um, you know, the knife will work as well, but clippers I think are the safest and uh, easiest way to do this. If you don't have a pair, I recommend you get them. I bought these at our hobby shop. Uh, I can't remember what they what they cost, but um, they're flat on one side, and um, that's the side you want against the model, and then that's the side you want against the, the sprue. So for example, we're going to start on the bottom of this uh, helicopter body. We've got the flat end up against there, and we're just going around and clipping. All right, and then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clip the first parts, uh, and then we'll go on from there. All right, now I've clipped the two halves. Um, what I want to do now is kind of look and see if there's any places I need to clean up with the file. For example, right here. We can see where we snipped it. Now the snippers did a pretty good job, but we want to get rid of any trace of that. So I'm taking my flat file in this case and just hitting it. So that's one way to do it and then you can you know, check to make sure you're happy with it. And you just want to go and look at all of the uh, points here that came off the frame or the sprue. Another way to do that is with the knife. Um, if it's a particularly big piece, you might want to you know, get it with a knife. 
I would be very careful though, it's real easy to um, gouge the plastic with the knife, also gouging your fingers as well. Um, so a lot of times the file is plenty, particularly if you have a good sharp set of um, clippers that you can get close to the model. So you're just cleaning up a few, few points here. So um, basically you go over, you look everywhere um, where it was attached to the frame. If I can hold on to the model here. I'm glad that they have more attachment points on the bottom than the top. Always tells you that the designer of the model kit is thinking because if you're a model builder like me or miniature builder like me, I often will cut corners to save time. One of those corners I might cut is detailing the bottom of the um, plane, tank, helicopter versus the top because I'm, I'm who looks at the bottom of the airplane. Um, total respect to those model builders who spend as much time on the bottom of a model as the top even though no one will see it. Um, but um, there we go. That looks pretty good so far. Um, but I'm just not one of those builders. So if I'm going to cut some corners it might be on the bottom. All right, so you can see I've got uh, I've got it sanded. I'm checking for fit before I put glue. Um, looks pretty good down here. All right, so I think we're ready to glue this guy together. So time for a plastic weld. I know some folks build all of these models with um, uh, super glue, and that's fine. I mean, that works just as well. It's glue, but um, I like this for plastic models. Maybe it's a carryover from um, youth when I was building like tester models and tester glue. Um, but basically, you're going to be welding. I want to hit the little studs that lock the model in place. The nice thing about that is, see, I didn't go crazy. I didn't dump a ton of glue on there. I just basically got it started. The nice thing about this glue is you can actually run it along the seam and through capillary action It's going to get into that join. And yeah, you're going to see some plastic discoloration there. If you put too much and put your finger on it, you're going to leave your fingerprints. Um, that looks like we could probably put a little glue there. You want to be very careful you don't put too much glue. Um, because, again, it could mark up or mar the exterior. So you can see I'm actually just using the tip of the brush. I'm not smearing the whole thing along there. And so I'm getting low on glue, so i got to put it in there and tip it. There we go. All right, um, one supply I didn't mention before is uh, these guys. These actually work pretty well. Um, you can also use metal binder clips. Uh, I, have, I have those as well, but sometimes you don't need that much pressure. These don't put as much pressure on the model as a binder clip, so sometimes these are better. Sometimes metal binder, binder clips are better. The wood ones um, are nice because they're less likely to damage the plastic than if you're putting just straight up metal against it. Uh, but you know, you put one there, you can put one up front, and then this guy's gonna dry pretty well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that while we trim out the next pieces. So as I cut out the um, pieces from the frame, I do notice that the um, kind of engine mountings 
are several pieces. Looks like three pieces according to the instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut those out and it looks like we assemble them first before we put them on the fuselage. Um, so we'll do that and show you that step. Alright, so next we have these uh, engine pieces, like I said, three parts. Um, basically, we also put some glue in there. This kind of part is nice because you don't have to run the glue along the outside. You can run the glue along the inside. It's a big enough gap you can get in there. Now one thing is this glue doesn't um, set as fast as super glue, but one of the things that uh, these Battlefront models don't have is a clear canopy or cockpit. Um, so you can see this gap here, this piece is going to go right there. I've already trimmed it up and cleaned it. So we're just going to put some glue on the rails here. And again, we don't want too much here. We want to be very careful because this is a focal point of the model. And um, we can see where we had a little bit too much glue there. And um, you could have a paper towel or just wipe it away. And it's pretty good. You probably want to use a paper towel. It's probably not good to get the glue on your fingers but you can see, there we go. And then we can slap one of those on there to make sure it dries in place. Next up, we're going to work on the tail. Um, so it's just a single piece. Sometimes these are two pieces and it goes in something like that. It is nice because it has a um, like recess where that just fits in. So you know you're gonna get it at the right angle um, compared to the fuselage. Now something you want to keep in mind when you're, um, whenever you do things like tails or wings or anything like that is make sure that the model has some, uh, you know, that the symmetry is maintained. So I put a little bit too much glue, but I'll kind of spread it in there, make sure it is sitting down. There we go. Make sure from, you know, make sure that looks like a 90 degree angles, which it does. I think we're good. And we'll go ahead and let that dry. Next up, we have this um, kind of floor plate here, which the gun attaches to. So we're going to put some glue on these tabs. Just basically get that guy in there. It's like it has always belonged. I can see you can see how that glue dries. It's um, a little shiny, but that's okay. And again, because we're on the bottom of the model and not the top, we can make sure that this guy is not coming loose. And this piece, I'm sure, is just adding to the stability of the model as well. Again, let's go ahead and clip that in there. All right, uh, these guys are dry, so we're going to attach them to the fuselage. There is, fortunately, this model has these rails here, which make it pretty easy to attach. I say that as. I have trouble attaching it. There we go. And then again, the underside, where no one can see, we can put in an extra bead of glue there to strengthen it. <clears throat> All right, so there we are so far. We're coming along. This is starting to look more and more like an Apache helicopter. Um, now, at this point, I gotta think about what version of helicopter I wanna build. The instructions 
um, have me build just the regular old AH-64 um, Apache, which is like the first version, first generation. Um, and that's this guy right here. But I want to build the longbow version. So looking closely, I can see that there are some differences. This part in particular here um, is different than this piece on the longbow. So, and those are both present on the sprue. You have the one for the regular um, AH-64, and then you have the AH-64 longbow. Uh, so we're going to use these pieces, these beefier pieces, uh, to make the longbow version. Now, why am I picking the longbow version over the regular version? Well, there's no stats, separate stats for the longbow version. Um, I just think it looks cool. And being an old uh, PC gamer and uh, a guy who likes playing flight sims, I remember quite fondly a uh, Apache Longbow uh, flight simulator. Microprose? I forget who, who made it. But it was just called like AH-64 Longbow or something like that. Um, and I always liked the look. Now, for those who aren't in the know or know their helicopters, you know, the, there's a few cosmetic differences like these pieces we're talking about here. But the main difference is kind of the uh, the dome that's above the helicopter blades, which allows the helicopter to basically hide behind trees or buildings and just have that little tiny thing poking up. And that's going to be able to see and guide your um, missiles in on your targets. So it just uh, is a way to... to keep your helicopter more protected. Again, there's no rules for that in the um, in the game. There's no rules for the AH-64 longbow, but um, I'm going to build them just because I think they look cool. And again, the rule of cool. I think it's going to go in like this. We have that piece for the wing. Well, winglet or whatever you want to call it. One of these guys. So it looks like that that's going to to fit in there. Now some of this again is, you know, there's not detailed um, instructions for building a version, the step-by-step, -step. so I'm just eyeballing it. That looks pretty cool. It certainly increases the, the profile of the Apache, makes it look a lot more beefy. Um, Alright, so we've got our piece. Looks like it fits pretty well. Oops, sorry, I nudged the camera there. Uh, there's a gap there, but that just might be intended. I don't think there's a way around that. So let's go ahead and get these pieces glued in and see what we get. And here we go. Um, that looks pretty solid. All right, so um, we've got our side pieces in. We've got our engines in. So I think the next thing we're going to add is the um, basically these little stubby wings that hang out that carry all of the uh, missiles and stuff like that. Um, again, there's no left-right in the instructions, so you just kind of got to look at it. Obviously, this is the bottom. That's the top. The profile of the piece we can see there versus there. So obviously, that one is going to slot in there. Okay. So now that we know the orientation, we can go ahead and glue these in and um, move on to the next step. All right. So I figured out with this piece here, the easiest way to do it is to get this corner in first. And then you kind of set it, and then that piece kind of pushes in place. So you want to look at it make sure that those two wings look aligned you know, that way, looks like it is, and we've got our tail fin, so we're coming along, that's starting to look really good, um, so really that's the main body of the Apache right there, um, everything else we're going to be adding is going to be propellers and um, weapons, so let's go ahead and start with that. Now probably the 
uh, bane of Team Yankee players is uh, these rotors on helicopters. Um, I don't know how many tournaments I've been to where more helicopters have broken rotors than, than don't. Um, when I built my Cobras, I used magnets. Looks like there aren't any magnets, and this piece is not geared up for magnets. Now you can cut and trim and, and make that work, but it does have a, a specially shaped piece in here that matches that, and that is going to slot in there. The reason why that's important is you don't want the the uh, you know the helicopter blades to be permanently attached to this model, and yeah, if you want to build it that way, sure. But boy, that that makes it a much bigger fingerprint um, for storage. You know, it's going to be awful, uh, awful lot harder to store something if it has built-in helico uh, helicopter blades, particularly something like this, which has a four-bladed uh, primary rotor. Um, it's just a lot of space. It's big. Um, so this way, um, we'll we'll be attaching the um, you know blades here, and then this piece will be able to come out. So then, when we're not playing, we can take off our helicopter uh, rotors, and, you know, and store them separately from the body of the helicopter. Now, the the tail rotor, um, we're going to leave that there. Once that's glued, it's going to be good. Hopefully, it will survive. Again, these are, are wargaming models, so they, they tend to get banged up quite a bit. Um, but that's why we play this game, isn't it? All right, so let's go ahead and um, deal with the rotors. Let's talk about the uh, tail rotor first. Now, these guys are always finicky um, to remove. This is where clippers come in very handy. Um, There we go. Um, and yes, I know, I shouldn't bring the knife towards you, but what can you say? All right. I am so glad this isn't two separate pieces. Um, a lot of helicopters, this would be two pieces you'd have to put together. Uh, but that's a single piece, and um, it's pretty cool. Now, one thing is you notice how it's not, you know, these aren't 90 degrees to each other, and that's just how the Apache um, rotor is. Why it's like that, I, I don't know. Um, but you can decide what orientation you want to, to glue this guy in. You know, maybe if it's up like that, uh, it'll survive more. So let's go ahead and uh, throw a little glue in there and get this guy going before we cut out the big... Uh, helicopter blades. All right, so we're going to do that. I'm also going to put some on here. Sometimes it's good to put glue on both sides, um, and it just helps with that melting process because you're welding these guys together. That's not a very deep uh, point, so you want to look at it and make sure that it looks good. All right, I think we're good there. All right, so let's look at the... All right, so you've got the two uh, big blades. That's nice, again, they're, they're not separate blades. Um, just two pieces we're gonna have to put together. And then there's that sensor for the um, longbow version, which we're gonna be using. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these cut out, and then we'll be back with the assembly. All right, we have our pieces uh, cut out and trimmed. So um, they make it very easy here with this connection point. So we're just gonna glue this guy up. And then we have a matching connection point there. And it's a very nice fit. So you can't even, you know, once it's together, you can't even tell that that's four pieces, two pieces, whatever. So um, you have a bigger hole here on the bottom, a smaller hole here on the top. So this is going to be part of that. The 
downside of this is, well, I suppose you could not glue that, but I probably would want to glue that, is that it doesn't spin. But again, this isn't a toy. It's a, it's a precision, precision scale model. Um, so, you know, that looks pretty good. So we can glue that together. So let's put a little glue here, a little glue there. And get it together. Kind of twist it to smear the glue around. I'm going to kind of decide on the where I want the blades, and I think I want the blades like that. And then, as far as I can tell, just to add the longbow sensor, it's just going to go like that. So, if this wasn't a different piece, you could just leave this not glued. And just longbow, not longbow, longbow. Uh, but since this piece is uh, different, we're kind of committed to the to the longbow. All right, so um, there we go. We're going to let that assembly dry while we look at the weapon store. So the weapons, we've got a couple different weapons here. Looking at the box. Um, We've got some missiles, uh, rocket pods. Uh, it looks like the uh, longbow has additional uh, rockets on the um, on the ends of those stubby wings. So, looking at the pieces, we see we have the um, rocket launchers. And tell you what, let's look at the card here while we got it. So, we've got Hellfire missiles, uh, chain gun, and rocket launcher. So these are the rocket launcher pieces. Over here we have Hellfires. And then here we've got the 30 millimeter chain gun. And here we have, <clears throat> excuse me, the more Hellfires. So I think they attach to this. Yeah, they attach here so that these are four Hellfires on each uh, pylon. And then you have the fronts of the rocket pods, so that's a separate piece. And then these are the rockets that go on the um, the wing tips, so they're going to go here. And that's different. So the longbow is going to have rockets here. The regular um, AH-64, you would not be using these pieces. So let's go ahead and uh, get all the cool shooty bits cut out, and then attached to our helicopter. I don't know if you guys remember those old photos of uh, like military aircraft on the runway with all of the weapons kind of laid out in front of it in, in cool um, order. So that's what, what I thought when I was laying out all this stuff. All right, so most of these are just two parts. Um, you have the rocket launcher, um, which is really simple. It's kind of keyed so that this piece only really slides in one way. So very, very simple. There is a gap that's there, but um, I don't know if that's on purpose or that's not something we're going to see anyway. Perfectionists would fill that with green stuff. And then these um, Hellfire missiles. We've got some holes there. The connection points are pretty, pretty straightforward. And then we slap these together. I don't think I need to paint these separately because basically pretty much everything on this helicopter is olive drab. Weapons, pylons. And these are just ready to cause some Soviet tanks worst nightmare. So if I could line them up correctly. All right, actually, uh, am on some cold medicine. Yes, I did have a COVID test taken. It came back negative, which was good. So I had a flu bug or a, a nasty cold, but kind of went through my family, freaked everyone out, but uh, everyone was good. 
and uh, I'm still recovering so you can see I'm using a inhaler for my lungs and it makes my hands a little shaky so I apologize for that all right so I've got my guns my rockets my missiles all set to glue on the helicopter this guy should be dry enough now that I can uh, well, we didn't glue that but this should now be one piece that can be taken out in and out quite easily without the need for a magnet. Now again you can magnetize it and the advantage of magnetizing it is the thing will spin um, which is cool but again it's not required. Alright so there you go um, we're gonna take that off so we have room for our hands as we attach all the weapons. So the weapons um, let's start with the 30 millimeter gun do you guys remember the movie Blue Thunder? Uh, I really like that movie. And I know Blue Thunder is based on a French gazelle helicopter. But Blue Thunder had this, you know, this cool sensor pod and the underslung Gatling gun. Uh, this isn't a Gatling gun, but it's a 30 millimeter cannon. can really ruin someone's day. But I always think about Blue Thunder when I, I build one of these guys. All right, so it looks like from the picture that the, um, the Hellfires are inbound on the inbound inside pylon. And then the rocket launchers are going to be on the outside pylon. So it doesn't look like there's any difference between these, um, these two. There's not a left and right pylon, at least as far as I can tell. So we're going to go ahead and do the inboard ones first. And I know, I know people are saying you should save this until you've painted. Because getting into that side and that side is going to be pretty hard. But, again, it's going to be one of the, the trade-offs when building models like this. Um, are you building a display piece? Something that you're taking to an event to win Best Painted? Um, then, yeah, you, you probably want to build build them, you know, paint this in assemblies and things like that. Um, but if you're building a wargaming model that's meant to be enjoyed on the table, um, you know, you can cut some corners and it's okay. You don't have to beat yourself up about it. I remember uh, we were at One Flames of War tournament um, and one of my friends, I'm not going to name any names, had a beautifully painted army and... Uh, People were walking around to judge best painted and one pe person walked up and picked up the tank and looked at the bottom of his tank and it was you know, primer black, which I've been guilty of it too. The top of his tank, immaculate, beautiful. Bottom of his tank had some black primer and boy that one judge was not happy about that. I just thought that was so silly. But again, that's kind of... Um, the trade-off. If I can get twice as many of these helicopters done because I don't spend as much time on the bottoms of them, that's a win for me. Because really, this helicopter is just a small part of my Team Yankee army. Um, Alright, so those guys are attached. Now we can go with these pods. And looking at the box, because they're not symmetrical as far as the mounting, it looks like the bigger flare is at the back. All right, so that part is, that you can see, goes to the back. All right, so we know the orientation now, so that should mean this should go on quite easily. And with this last rocket lift, we're in pretty good shape. Okay, and then we'll set that down to dry. I guess the last thing to do is commit to the longbow. I'm committing to the longbow. We're going to slap some glue there. And this is for sure a longbow now. 
and make sure this is in place so that my sensor is looks good all right so let's check the box and we can see here the way that they've built it the the shorter part of the sensor this is divided like 70 30 is towards the front which is what we have contrary to what you think that dome doesn't really spin like the helicopter blades do um, it does. so there you go that is I always love the Apache it's just kind of it looks cool it's a brutal war machine but there's some elegance to it um, and this is big too this is a big helicopter I mean it's not uh, like a hind the Russian hind which uh, you know carries troops as well there's only two guys in this but it's a, it's a big helicopter all right guys there you go now once it's built you can come in here and see well looks like I might need to you know, hit that That and clean it up. So there's still some cleanup as you go through. You're going to see little parts you missed, little gaps you might want to fill with putty, but I think this looks really good. All right, there you go. From box to completed Apache helicopter in one video. Um, next, I'm going to slap some paint on it and uh, kind of get ready for battle. I'm trying to talk Jake into. Um, dipping his toe back into Team Yankee. Um, he didn't play much. He, he he went to one of our Shifting Sands tournaments, which uh, Team Yankee won that we had several years ago. But I think he used my Soviets that I had, my Team Yankee Soviets. So I don't think he's actually ever built his own Team Yankee army. But we'll see. Maybe I could talk him into playing the Americans, and I could take the Soviets, because who could say no to this guy? He looks so cute. All right, guys, there you go. That is a AH-64 Apache Longbow Helicopter for Team Yankee. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys like our uh, Flames of War content, uh, please do check out our Patreon. I'll leave a link down in the video description below. Uh, also, you can check us out at Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. We'd love uh, you know if you, you followed us over there, see what we're up to. Also, here on YouTube, we'd always appreciate a like and subscribe. Click that bell icon so you receive notification when we publish new content. Thanks for watching, and keep on wargaming.